Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming back or for those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Joanna the Medium or Joanna, I am a medium. Um, these are going to be your messages for the month of April 2019. I think on two videos I said March, uh, please disregard that, I was doing them in March. Um, so, but they are for April. There is, so if you hear March, um, it is April. It's in fact for April. Um, what can I say? Um, I'm, I'm gonna be very brief. If you guys would like to have a session with me, uh, a personal session with me, that information is down below. You know how to find me. Uh, for those of you who are my clients, thank you so much. For those of you who are watching, thank you so much. For those of you who are subscribing, thank you so much for giving me your time. And I'm going to state my intention. My intention is to give you something to think about. My intention is to inspire a thought. Hopefully a thought that will lead to a different conclusion that will allow you to have a different perception, which then will allow you to shift your reality. So that is always my highest intention, which means sometimes certain things will come in in terms of predictions, and sometimes it's going to be way bigger than that in terms of what's happening energetically. And based on that, you can decide how to use this information or this energy uh, in order to help you. So that is my intention for you of course it may not um, it may not make sense to everybody uh, everyone is different however I feel a majority of you will uh, be able to understand these messages at some point whether it's in April May or June or the following months uh, for some of you the energies you may have been feeling for quite some time already so it may be an indication of what has been happening uh, with you uh, keep, so keep that in mind. Um, and if nothing makes sense, don't worry about it, but do maybe check in down the road uh, because chances are it will make perfect sense to you. And also listen to your other signs. I also will say this, these energies uh, or the messages, even though they're by a zodiac sign, it is very clear to me, and that's what I'm being told, that uh, even if you are drawn to a certain sign that you don't normally listen to, um, let's say you click on one of my videos, you're a Cancer, but you click on Pisces, and I don't know, you clicked it because I don't know, you just clicked it, and then all of a sudden, there is some message in there that resonates with you 100%. Don't dismiss this message, because although it's not under your sign, it is a message for you, and therefore you're hearing it. So that's how I would encourage you to use um, use my messages. They're, they're, they're mostly about universal laws. It's how things work and how things are uh, being seen from a higher perspective, so to speak. Um, and I think that's all I have. Um, extremely, extremely transformative month. Every single sign I've done without a, without, without a doubt, every single sign that, I, that I've done for April, extraordinary, powerful energy of transformation. And um, I know that March has been kind of feeling that way. I have certainly been going through my own transformation and I know it's not over yet. Um, so uh, it was actually incredible to see that in every single sign. So with that said, I'm going to um, just move on and let you enjoy the rest of the messages. I wish you best of luck. Of course, if you would like a private session, that information is down below. If you would like to comment, please do so as well. I always love hearing them or seeing them. Thank you again so much for giving me your time. Thank you for participating in my journey. It is actually because of you that I am on this journey because if it wasn't for you, the listener, I would have, well, I would have, there would be no need for me to do this. So thank you once again. I wish you absolutely wonderful time in April and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, let's get started. Hello, beautiful Capricorns. These are going to be your messages for the month of March. Oh, March, April, 2019. I, I keep saying March. It's because I'm recording this in March. And, well, the energies in March, um, as some of you may be experiencing, are quite, uh, or were, when you listen to it in April, uh, quite potent. So I am, I'm working with these energies right now. So if I say March, it's not March. This is for April. All right. Um... <laughs> Okay, where do I start with this? First and foremost, I want to say this to you. For those of you who are going through a bit of a turmoil in your life right now, and no, this is not a prediction that something bad is going to happen. But if you have been going through some sort of a turmoil, uh, an internal thing that you're going through, um, particularly something that has you feeling like you're suffocating, okay, um, 
you are uh, you are being reminded that the universe has your back now what does that mean it means that you are being supported and when we go through time when we go through growth periods of growth we often feel quite uncomfortable and usually because certain things come up to the surface that feel well let's face it sometimes not particularly very good and again this is not a prediction that you're not going to feel good in the month of april this is just saying that if you have been dealing with something for quite some time uh something internally like you know you're suffocating um you are being supported by the universe and Standing alone does not mean that you have to do it all alone. This is a message for someone, even if it's just for one of you, to hear very clearly. Standing alone does not mean you have to do everything alone. Standing alone means you are an independent person, but there are people to help you. Therefore, uh, depending on them is okay. And I feel like I'm talking to someone who perhaps is resistant to asking for help and if that's the case you may need to examine why what this is for you and why you might be resisting asking for help with that comes a lot of things perhaps you feel um that if you ask for help something there is a something attached to it in the end so there is an agenda perhaps you do not believe there is anybody out there that can help you perhaps you don't trust other people to help you perhaps i mean I mean, I could go on with probably finding another 15 reasons in the next minute or so, but I think you guys get the picture. The point here is that many of you are learning how to how to be uh, how to stand alone. That does not mean you will be alone, but it means how to how to how to be strong within yourself. Um uh, I'm going to leave that and we'll see if it come if I if I come back with something that that's a little bit more um clear than that but I feel for those of you who are meant to hear it you'll get it. The reason why I was saying all this thing all these things to begin with is because I was shown um I was shown the symbol of a mushroom and to me mushroom well okay mushroom represents knowledge yes to me it does but it also represents it's a symbol of protection. And as you are going through this process, and we all are, and I have cards to prove it, um, you may not feel, like I said, fairly comfortable, but the universe is asking me to say to you that you are protected. And for those of you who particularly feel like you have, like you've always had to do it all alone, or like you have always been the one people relied on, but when it comes to you, you have no one to rely on to help you. I feel this is ultimately for those of you who feel that. Obviously, um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So, <clears throat> um, the number eight is being shown to me and it's being played with, and that to me ter means that in the month of April, and again, the energies are not, you know, in four and a half weeks uh, increments, they're fluid. So you may have been experiencing this for a while, as in you might, you're like, you've had a headache for quite some time, because I just got a headache. So you literally may be getting a headache as you're listening to me. And no, I'm not giving you a headache. Um, but the headache is indicative of many things. One, you have had a headache about something, and that's the proverbial saying, you've got a headache on your hands for quite some time. Or something is preoccupying you and it's quite substantial energetically speaking it's a lot of weight or pressure on your mind and you may be experiencing more headaches than usual i also feel that as we are expanding into this much 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 higher frequency um, i myself have been experiencing headaches and I am not a headache person, thank God. For those of you who deal with migraines, I, I don't envy you, and I hope it's not many of you. Um, so if you are dealing with migraines, or if you have migraines, you might feel like they are amplified a little bit in the month of April or in the next few weeks. Obviously, never take my word for it, and if you are concerned, go and check it out with a doctor. But what I am feeling is a lot of the transitional energies that we are experiencing will affect us on a, on a physical level. 
Therefore, it is extraordinarily important that you take care of you. And that means you might need to be selfish. And I received a message from Spirit a few years ago, and it went something like this. Most of us are, are, are taught how to be selfless to others. But when are we taught to be selfless to ourselves? Generally, at least based on the people that I have spoken with over the last 15 to 20 years, um, we have difficulty taking care of our own needs. For whatever reason, we are very good at taking care of uh, others, taking care of others' needs. But a lot of us come from a place, particularly if you're a healer of any sort. If you're a healer, to me, it's a dead giveaway that you have some issues with receiving. It's just kind of like, it's like a clockwork. It, <clears throat> with a 98% certainty, if you, if, uh, in my experience, if you are a healer or if you are a giver, or if you are of some, if you are of service to others in some way, generally what I see is that you have difficulty with receiving. But anyway, it is important that over the next little while you take impeccable, absolutely impeccable care of yourself. And that means get rid of garbage, get rid of toxins, get physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally, uh, get rid of foods that don't serve you, get rid of people that don't serve you, get rid of TV programs that don't serve you, anything that lowers your energy levels, anything that that lowers your vibration anything that is cut that is rooted in lack if you have the ability to say no thank you and leave it behind you're being encouraged to do that and i'm seeing a spray a repellent and i feel like this is this is a, a and i'm not laughing because it's funny but transform tra these are energies that literally act like a repellent uh, these energies will um for the most part, get rid of things that no longer serve you, including uh, people and circumstances. But you always have free will, therefore you can always hang on. And if you do, uh, chances are you will be experiencing what I call resistance. And resistance is nothing more than an aspect of you that doesn't want change and another aspect of you that is, well, changing because life is all about change. It's all about evolution. So. I'm going to leave that for now and I'm going to move on with the cards. So you are being protected. Impeccable impeccable taking care of yourself is absolutely mandatory. Now, as far as I'm concerned and it is what I'm learning, it is some it is one of my lessons is to learn how to love and nurture myself. That is one of my core things to deal with, which is why I'm so passionate to helping you uh get that as well. Um it's important that we learn how to nourish ourselves because when we don't, uh, well, we'll, our mind, our body will find a way to nourish it in other ways, except oftentimes it, it is something that long term is not, uh, well, is not good for us. So what are the three areas that might be affected in the next little while? Uh, even though this is for April, Keep in mind, you may have been going through it for a while. You may be right smack in the middle of it, or this might be something that will be transpiring. Chances are, once you hear this, you'll have a pretty good idea what this is about for you. If not, listen at the end of the month or even sometime in May. So the first card, <laughs> the moment I said, what's going to be affected uh, in, in, you know, thereabouts in April with, with those who will be looking at Capricorn. Yes, you got the death card. You're not the first time to get this card. And it's actually quite, um, what's the word, please? Consistent with everything that I have been experiencing in terms of speaking to clients, which I do that every single day. And um, what has been going on with friends of mine and people I know and also with myself. So we are all going through tremendous shifts and changes. If you are listening to this channel, if you are listening to any sort of information like this, Spirit Connected, then you have some kind of an understanding that there are changes happening in our evolution as in 
this planet. And although I don't always talk about these things, I actually never talk about these things because I try to make things very user friendly. I want things to be esoteric, but in a way that's very practical. But I am being asked to say this, or I feel like I need to say this because uh, what that means is as we are moving through these changes, things might feel amplified. And when things feel amplified, certain things come up to the surface. When they do, it's often time to look at it, to observe it, to understand it, and then hopefully to let it go. So the death card represents, well, death. It is not a physical death. I call this, um, let, let's call it ego death. In other words, there is an aspect of your personality that is wanting to be no longer. Although that's not an accurate statement, I'm gonna leave it at that because I think you guys know what I mean. So look at this person, this guy or gal, uh, is staring right at me and he or she doesn't look particularly friendly as a matter of fact it kind it's kind of daunting and this is a sign that whatever is going on in your life for at least some of you uh, it is uh, going on because you are going through a tremendous transformation which means please if you can help it do not resist this transformation. It is absolutely necessary for your soul, uh, for your soul's evolution. And in practically speaking terms, it's actually good for you down the road. You may not see it. So if it feels like you have been put through a ringer, um, and this may have happened some time ago, or this might be happening right now as you're listening to it. This is not a prediction that something bad is going to happen. That is not, this is, I don't, I, I, I don't focus on predictions. I, my focus is to help, my focus is to, my intention is to inspire a thought. And hopefully that thought will lead to more thoughts that will eventually shift your perception of who you are that will ultimately allow you to move away or out of your own self-imposed prison, which we are all in being humans. Some are in bigger prisons, some are in lesser prisons, and uh, you guys know what this means, right? It's just, you know, the things in our mind. So this is, this is what's affected. You are going through a transformation. There's just no other way of saying it. The snake here is very symbolic of, I'm, I'm gonna use the term Kundalini, for those of you who understand this, you know what I mean. It's the primal force. It's power. It's the very, it's the essence of all that is. It's consciousness itself. It's the sheer power. And uh, it is also symbolic of um, snake, which is your own inner power. So in order for there to be integration, there has to be disintegration first. Disintegration, is that the right word? Um yeah, similar to a tower, in order to have a strong foundation, the current foundation, which is not very strong, has to be taken apart in order to be put together back in a way that fits better. And I feel like I've said this before. I'm not sure if I said it to you specifically, but uh, you guys know what that means. So um, whatever that means. OK, so in terms of practicality, what could this mean for you? Well, some of you might be going through internal changes where you are no longer unsatisfied with satisfied with what is. And as a result of your dissatisfaction, chances are it has been that way for a while, you are beginning to look at things differently and you're beginning to slowly but surely make certain changes. And perhaps some of these changes are to avoid people who no longer serve you. Perhaps it's to let go of things like commitments that really don't serve you anymore, but you are so used to it, you can't help it. Um, and sometimes those things can Sometimes those things serve like baby blankets. They're kind of there for safety. Um, but as we all move through this energy, and you're no different, uh, chances are there are some things, particularly inside of you, particularly within your own belief system, because uh, it's always about our belief systems, really. Uh, there's something that is trying to um, evolve itself out of you, meaning, um, well, you get the picture. The next card is the Queen of Coins. So for those of you who are familiar with tarot, you may have a different interpretation and I welcome you to have that as well. What this means to me is that whatever you're going through in the next little while or whatever you have been going through will uh, affect your 
sense of security or safety. It will it will affect you in terms of how solid you feel. And although this is um, an earth energy and it can signify some sort of uh, financial situation, the way I see it is that your transformation is taking place in terms of, is taking place in the area that matters most, which is your own sense of value or who you are. So who you are is based on how you perceive yourself and how you perceive yourself is uh, how you think and how you think is what creates your reality. So if there's any snags in terms of what you think about yourself or what beliefs you have, and a lot of these will be hidden, uh, these will be unconscious. And uh, you might be saying right about this time, well, if it's unconscious, how would I know? Well, you will know by examining and looking at your patterns. If there is something that you are consistently struggling with, and it seems to be that way for a while, then that means more likely than not that you have some sort of a pattern that you are following. Uh, whatever that is, notice the pattern and notice the feelings that go along with it. Once you know, once you see it repeating in your life, and that should be fairly easy to, um, to observe, uh, for most people, I, I would think. Um, it is for me. For me, it's very easy to see that in you, but I, I have an x-ray vision, so it's easy for me. And it's also my passion. I absolutely get high on that. Uh, point is, if you observe your patterns, your behaviors, and the uh, emotional component of it, your, your emotions and your feelings about you in certain situations will be pretty good indicators of your belief system. Now, looking at that is not easy work. Why is it not easy? Because it means we have to, we have to look at ourselves. And that often comes, unfortunately, with judgments. So the reason why it's difficult to look at ourselves is because it comes with judgment. Imagine having no judgment for a while, and then you look at yourself it would be so much easier because you wouldn't have all these judgments about you, right? So I would invite you to look at that, whatever that, and each of you will, will, will deal with something different. Each of you are dealing with something different, but particularly for those of you who feel like you're suffocating. If you're suffocating in a relationship, if you're suffocating at work, if you're suffocating in a friendship and dynamic, wherever it is that you are suffocating, Chances are your heart is already telling you what to do, but your ego may not be ready to make that leap of faith or make this jump. Or you are in fact making this jump and hence this transformation. Um, and that's not, it's not necessarily always a comfortable process. I will say that the Uranus planet in the sign of Taurus is all about our foundations. It's about our structures. It's about our beliefs, particularly when it comes to value, whether it's physical value, our emotional value, our perceived value. So this stuff will affect you and it affects, I guess, Taurus the most. I would say I'm not an astrologer, but I've read some things on it. Um, so it will affect Taurus, but it will affect everyone in different ways. So I'm going to move on from that. So your confidence might be affected. Your work might be affected. Uh, your value system is what is shifting and changing. Okay. Now, the next card you have is Hermit. Although this little this guy showed up in this position, again, for those of you who... Uh, understand tarot, you may feel you may have a different message. I would invite you to follow that. Listen your intuition. To me, it symbolizes several things. Number one, hermit to me is someone is a source of information. And this person, the way it's he he is depicted, is um, sitting with his eyes closed and he's in a um, meditative pose, signaling that he's going within. Now, because this card showed up this way, it signifies to me that there may be a couple things. You may feel like you want to isolate yourself in the next little while, which 
if that's the case, if you if you need to isolate yourself because you need to deal with some internal stuff, nothing wrong with that. But there's a bit of a caution with that. Uh, don't close yourself off, okay? Because it's easy to just kind of close yourself off, particularly for those of you who feel like there is no help. Remember the saying, what was the saying again, please? Um, standing alone does not mean you have to do it all alone. Is that what it was? I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So for those of you who are reluctant to ask for help, when you go through a transition, um, you might feel like you just want to become this hermit and like you want to just hide. And that's okay. It is okay to do that. It is all, it is all part of self-preservation and self-care. But I want to say, just be mindful that you are not hiding from the world or from your situation because everything has two sides plus minus good bad negative positive everything both both sides need to exist in order for everything to exist yin yang let's use that analogy so just kind of pay attention um this is also a good time here's spirit again my nose this is also a, a perfect time as a matter of fact to go within in order to, um, well, to, to go through this process of transformation, right? When we are going through this, it is actually a requirement to be still. Um, because if we're running around keeping ourselves busy, then we are essentially trying to not deal with whatever is going on. And um yeah i'm gonna leave it at that this is also a time for education it is time to gain greater, get greater clarity the vision here which says education you see this lady she's sitting on rocks and she's reading a book uh and the book symbolizes knowledge awareness um well knowledge so this could mean in a very plain old way that you are in a process of learning something new learning something new about yourself learning something new about something you like or you are picking up some kind of a, a hobby or interest that is of interest to you the stork here which is what i believe this is that is how i'm seeing it is re representative of new life so how would i how would i say this please um if I say that there is a new beginning right around the corner, right around the corner, um, you may take it or leave it. I mean, it's kind of, I guess, you know, once the moment one door closes, when we go through transformation, certain doors close, whether they're physical doors or metaphorical doors, it doesn't matter. But nothing always remain the same. Things always change. So there is, of course, a new beginning. After a transformation, there is absolutely no possibility of there to not be a new beginning. I think I said it right, particularly because the star is where you're heading. That's emotional balance. That's the yin and yang. That's the being able to withstand whatever is going on. And even though it doesn't feel great, you're able to flow through it, um, which means less resistance. Um, when that shows up, shows up. It's usually an indication of something's ending. Ending of a relationship, ending of a, of a certain way of being, ending of a certain way of doing things, ending of a certain way of believing things about yourself. I mean, you guys get the idea what that means. Um, but this is absolutely where you're heading, okay? You might feel the effects of the transformation in May. So you may feel the star effect, which is rebirth in May. And in order to be reborn, something must first die, right? So no, no question in my mind and in my heart that many of you who listen to this are going through, are, are at crossroads. And it is so consistent. It is actually, it's not even funny how consistent it is. 
how every single person I talk to is at crossroads. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you want to speak with me because you're at crossroads and you're trying to figure out what to do. Point is, this is what's transpiring with, uh, I think, a lot of you. I'm going to cover a few more bases very quickly. Uh, ultimate evolution means you are heading to a point. A point? How do I say this? You are evolving, you are evolving in such a way that in a very short order, you may look at yourself and you may go, I don't know who I am anymore. But when that happens, it is the perfect opportunity to create who you are. I had a, I remember I had a moment some time ago in a deep meditation where I absolutely lost uh, awareness of who I was and it was actually quite terrifying and I kept saying to spirit who am I who am I who am I and it didn't last very long it lasted maybe two or three minutes which two or three minutes of that is not very pleasant and I remember saying who am I who am I and all I kept hearing was who do you choose to be and I remember it was so powerful because I was going through a transition and I was questioning things. I was questioning things about myself, about my life, about my work. And is what I do helping people? I was questioning. And all these doubts were coming into my mind. And yes, I have them too. Plenty of them. And I remember Spirit kept saying, who do you choose to be? Who do you choose to be? Who do you choose to be? And who we are is based on our self-perception or our perception of self. So if you come to a place where you say to yourself, I don't know who I am anymore, that's a good thing. Because it allows you to pause and say, who do I choose to be? And that is very freeing. Any sort of oppression that you have um, lived through, whether it is oppression of your doing to yourself or someone else oppressing you in some way, I feel majority of you who who connect with this will eventually at some point, at least when I say at some point between now and the end of the year, uh, this is what I hear some of you say, and I apologize, I usually don't swear, but this is what I hear you say, fuck it, I'm out of here. So, <laughs> my apologies. Um, this could be, I'm out of here because um, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. I don't want to be in this work situation anymore. I don't want to be in this complicated, convoluted, uh, you know, whatever it is. It could be, could be anything. It could be family. It could be anything. Or it, it's just you, you, it, you live somewhere and it's just, and you decide to go, I'm going to move. The biggest thing, if I can leave with you for the month of April, is to be crystal clear with your intention. And here's why. The energies are so palatable right now. There's, the energies are so potent that anything we put our thoughts to, consciously or, or otherwise, have the ability to manifest in a very short order and in, an, in a very amplified way. So if we are unsure of our attention or if our intention is not clear to us, it would be equivalent to you, you know, throwing, throwing uh, spaghetti on the wall and hoping what, something will stick. Not a very effective use of your power and energy. There's a far more effective way of doing that. So most people, at least the ones that I talk to, and I think that's human nature, are not aware of our deep true intention. For example, when we do things for other people and we do it relentlessly and we do it and we do it and we do it, uh, if we were to dig down deep, some of that doing may be mitigated by the fact that we want to belong. So our intention is to belong and that is why we do things for other people. Uh, but if we go in, if we fall too far into a pattern of doing that for other people and we are not aware of our intention, unless we are clear and aware of what that is, uh, we'll just keep on doing the same thing over and over again or we'll, or we'll stop doing that and we'll do something else. So if you have a need to belong, as an example, and you do things for other people because the underlying intention is I want to belong, mm, mm, those are the things that will change 
because nobody can make you belong unless you, it comes from within you. So I hear they got the picture, <laughs> okay? Um, so your, your strength is being tested. And whenever we go through transformation, particularly death and rebirth process, it is absolutely not even possible for your strength not to be affected. Um, but it will be affected in such a way that at the end of the day, you will come out of it feeling stronger than ever. So my shamanic deck, this is about the power of your thought and the power of your intention. This is um, a lot of, a lot of it is to do with safety and security. If your thoughts are preoccupied with not being safe, with being alone, with not being light, with not being um, part of a group, with being rejected, those are the thoughts that will, uh, well, muddy or muddy were your intention. They will, those thoughts are not congruent with where I feel you want to go because nobody wants to feel those things. As far as I know, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm a human. Most human want to, most humans, I would say everyone, but I never say anything is 100%, just because. Um, we all want to feel at peace. Who doesn't want to live at peace, right? Nobody says, hey, I wanna live, uh, I wanna live in, you know, in shambles. Nobody says that. So whatever is unfolding in, in your life, let it unfold. That does not mean you sit like this and you are idle. Uh, your intuition will tell you what you do, what to do. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing at all and let it all play out. And sometimes that can be difficult, particularly for people who need to feel like they're controlling their environment. Um, so if you have any, if you have any tendencies towards control or wanting to control, which we all do to some extent, control is a good thing except when we become so controlling or we try to control life so much that life has difficulty giving us what we want. Because we always, we all, if it comes to control or anything else for that matter, our way of controlling things is always based on our current state of our awareness, current state of our consciousness. The moment we shift our consciousness, that control or that need for control may actually dissipate or disappear altogether. So, I'm going to stop blabbing because I'm going on for too long. And I just noticed 3311, how, um, how appropriate beginnings, expansion. Six and two is eight. Three and three, six plus one and one is two. Six plus two is eight. So there's every indication here that uh, your strength will, is, is being tested, but you are gaining more strength as a result of your strength being tested. You're proving to yourself that you can do it, is, is what I'm trying to say. And with that said, I'm seeing a vision and my hands are tied and all of a sudden, ping, my hands are free. This to me symbolizes freedom, but this is not a physical freedom. I'm hoping none of you are experiencing uh, lack of freedom in the physical sense. This is emotional and mental freedom. And our physicality is a mirror image of our emotions and our thoughts. So it's important to, to understand that, to, to, to go deep within and to perhaps, um, yeah, meditate. Yeah, so meditation, um, impeccable care of yourself. Make sure you, just like you would spend your money wisely, Spend your energy wisely too, okay? And I'm going to leave it at that. I hope this was helpful. Very transformative energy, and I absolutely love it. Um, if this makes no sense to you right now, listen to it later. I always say it will make sense to you at some point, and that's pretty much a guarantee. I wish you best of luck. Of course, if you would like to connect with me one-on-one, uh, -on -one, that information is down below. I wish you best of luck. Take care of yourself, and please remember your intention.